Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing my Pico belt bag from Celine, and I'm going to cover everything from pros and cons to the wear and tear of this bag. I'm also going to talk about how I style this bag, as well as talk briefly about what fits in here. I do have an entire video dedicated to a size comparison between this bag and the Louis Vuitton Nano Speedy, so I don't want it to be too repetitive. So if you want to find out more about what fits in this bag, as well as the general size, comparing it to a highly sought after bag, definitely check out that video I'll have it linked up here as well as in the description box and of course the most important question related to any bag purchase I'm going to talk about whether I think this bag is worth it or not so let's get started so this Pico belt bag is the newest addition to the belt bag line with Celine, and this is now the smallest size that they have available in that line. So this bag is currently retailing for $1,850 US dollars and it's available in five colors. So this bag has of course the defining belt feature right here which is the strap that is knotted in two places at the front and then on both ends it hangs down further than where the bag ends. And then there is a top handle as well as on the back of the bag there are these two d-rings for you to attach an adjustable and detachable shoulder strap i'll get into the shoulder strap in a little bit so there is this flap opening for this bag and then on the bottom there actually aren't any feet to protect the bottom which i'm not a big fan of i usually like for there to be feet on the bottom of all of my bags whether they're a small bag or a bigger bag i just think that it's kind of like an extra level of protection and then when you open this bag you will see the zipper here so when i open the zipper on the inside is of course the shoulder strap but then on the inside, there actually is no extra compartments. So it could be a little bit of a black hole in here, but I do really like that they lined it in suede and not a fabric lining, for instance, because I just think that this is more luxurious. So going back to the crossbody strap on this bag, there are a lot of adjustments that you can make to the strap. So there is a total of seven holes for you to adjust the strap. And I really like that because most crossbody straps even at the shortest setting is not a great length for me to carry over one shoulder i am five foot four for reference i actually use it to the second to tightest setting and it is the perfect length to wear over my shoulder and then i can also make it a little bit longer to wear crossbody so i would say that if you're shorter than me there is still a little bit more room to adjust it and of course if you are taller there's also a lot more adjustments for you to play with so i think that this crossbody strap was very well designed so for this bag i think it is a very secure bag because one you have the zipper on the inside as well as then you have this magnetic clasp over here that slips underneath this belt detail and that is a very secure magnet closure also and of course since you do have this strap right here it kind of keeps it from opening really easily so if someone were trying to pickpocket you unless they knew the ins and out of this bag they probably couldn't easily open your bag up but on the flip side because it is so secure it could actually be very fussy in a way so for example i initially found that this magnetic closure was a bit of a hassle to get the magnet to lock into place but what i found was because this flap over here slips underneath this belt detail there really isn't much space for the flap to go other than just up and down so eventually if you just push this flap down that will snap into place just like that that didn't seem like it took too much time right so another part that is a little bit fussy about this bag is once you open this magnet you also have this zipper to fuss with before you can get inside your bag the good thing about this zipper is that it is a very smooth zipper and also there is this extra tab on the side so if you wanted to unzip it all the way you could open the bag even wider the more i've used this bag the more i realize that it just makes more sense to leave it unzipped all the time there is just so many layers of security with this bag 
and even when you just close this flap right here and have it snap onto the magnet even if you were to hold it by the top handle or even the crossbody strap there isn't much pressure being put on this magnet at all another con about this bag is the defining feature of this bag really is this belt detail at the front and i really like how it hangs down straight down like this and at the beginning i tried so hard to maintain this kind of look to the bag and when i would put this bag away in my closet i would store this at the edge of my shelf so while the bag is resting very safely on top of the shelf these straps are hanging down the front of it but what i realized is that is only possible when you're just storing your bag away. I wouldn't go out of my way to place this at the corner or edge of a table or a chair or even in my car seat. That isn't something that I would feel comfortable with doing because it could fall off at any moment. So what happens is when you just quickly set this down on any surface, these straps will just bend inwards like this and what I have noticed about this bag and you can kind of see it just from me doing this for like a few seconds is that it tends to kind of just go back into this shape it's up to you if you mind it or not and if you're set on getting this bag because of how unique this belt detail looks with this hanging straight down then it's probably not enough of a reason to get this bag. So that's the perfect transition into talking about the wear and tear of this bag. So of course this bag is a new release and I just purchased it about a month ago. So I can't speak to the long-term wear and tear of my bag specifically, but what I will talk about is some suspicions that I have about the wear and tear. Based off of some photos that I see online of pre-loved bags, I can kind of tell you guys what I think are potential problems that you might face further down the line. The thing with this bag is that it is in a grained leather, so it is very sturdy, but especially on this flap, what I've noticed from pre-loved bags is that they'll kind of be bent and wrinkled in not a very appealing way. And along the same lines, I've noticed on a lot of pre-loved belt bags that the leather on this belt detail in the front is so stretched out. I also mentioned, of course, that there's no metal feet on the bottom of the bag, so that could potentially cause an issue with the wear and tear of the leather down here, but surprisingly, I haven't really seen that much wear and tear on the bottom on pre-loved bags. Maybe it's because the leather is pretty sturdy, so it's not really necessary for it to have feet on the bottom. The only thing I've noticed is that there might be some color transfer or dirt on the bottom of the bag if you get it in a lighter color and the last point on wear and tear that I want to mention is this top handle on this bag is actually probably the softest of all top handles that I own so this is actually quite soft and flexible so I can kind of like push it down and everything so what I've noticed which is so unfortunate on pre-loved bags and it really makes the bag look so awful in my opinion is that this top handle would just be completely misshapen and warped i think part of it is down to the storage of the bag so i think what's great is when i purchased this bag it actually came with this little styrofoam piece that was directly inside here and i've kept it to use when I store this bag because this is just a great way to keep this curved top handle shape and if you don't have this piece because of course it depends what you're given when you purchase this bag you could easily take maybe like some tissue paper or maybe a pair of socks or something just to put in here to maintain its shape. Now, as I mentioned, I do have another video where I go into detail about what fits into this bag. So without being too repetitive, I just wanted to let you guys know in this video that if you had a bigger size iPhone that will fit in this bag, if you had the Louis Vuitton mini pochette, which I know is super popular, 
that will also fit in this bag and of course a card holder or your key holder that type of thing will also fit in here you can also put like a pair of sunglasses in a soft case in here also and i actually think that surprisingly this bag fits quite a bit it's not the biggest mini bag out there but this does fit quite a bit now I would say that the thing I love the absolute most about this bag is just how versatile it is. So on its own, it is a very understated bag and I do tend to wear it in more casual ways when I have it just like so. It's kind of sad that I'm saying this, but this bag has kind of replaced my Chanel reissue as my favorite low-key understated bag so this has been a favorite of mine for so long and it still is a favorite of mine but this bag is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter and i usually carry approximately the same things in both of these bags so this bag has been a favorite of mine recently to wear for both casual occasions as well as there are ways of dressing this bag up like this so i've just wrapped a silk scarf around the handle and it really changes up the look of this bag so much and i think because this bag is so simple on its own there isn't really many bells and whistles and design features to it i think that it's very easy to dress it up as you want to you know if you weren't really a fan of using a scarf you could maybe hang a charm on it or something or you can replace the leather crossbody strap with a chain strap and that will easily change up the look also as for the answer to probably the most important question when you're watching a bag review is this bag worth it $18.50 is a lot of money for a mini size bag especially since the nano size which is the next size up only cost $300 more than this so when you're thinking about the size difference that you can get just for a little bit more money that bag is probably more worth it but you can keep applying that same type of logic to the next size up and just keep going from there but at the end of the day it really only matters that the bag you get suits your needs and even if i were to think that oh i could pay a few hundred dollars more for a much bigger bag if i won't use that bag then it really doesn't matter how great of a supposed value it is so this bag works for my needs so i do think that this is worth it but it is up to you to decide if you think that this bag will suit your needs and if it does suit your needs then yes i do think that this is worth it so that is it for my review of the pico belt bag from celine and i really hope this was helpful to you guys and informative and hopefully i answered the questions you have about this bag before you purchase it but if i haven't answered your question do leave them in the comments down below and i'll definitely get back to you and if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up because that is very helpful to my channel and of course if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do consider subscribing for new videos every single week and i'll leave two videos up on the screen for you to watch next so i'll see you very soon bye for now mm -hmm.